live in a world of fire and sand. The crimson sun scorches the life from anything that crawls or flies. And storms scour the foliage from the barren grand. This is a land of blood and dust, where tribes of feral elves sweep out of the salt plains to plunder the lonely caravans. Mysterious singing winds call travelers to slow suffocation in the sea of silt. And selfish kings squander their subjects' lives, building gaudy palaces and garish tombs. It is a brutal and savage land, beset by political strife and monstrous abominations where life is grim and short. This bleak wasteland is Athos, and it is home. Greetings, wanderers. I am Elder Chekos, and in this table I am Boris the Dragon, and I am the raging spirit of Rajat and the merciless Crimson Sun. With me are those hardened by the burning sands and the ravagings of Sorcerer Kings. The Thasians, let the audience know who you are and who you're playing. Hey there, I'm Eric at Modern Recluse Online, and tonight I will be playing Kern, the Chaotic Good Gladiator. And I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi or right here on the closet floor. And tonight I will be playing Drick Chicket. Hello, my name is Rachel. I am playing the Scion Jinan. And hi, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox, and tonight I am playing Fate, our Aarakocra Ranger. Together we are beholden to the city state of Horrible Tales, where you can witness dramatic tales of terror and adventure every evening of every day. We bring you chilling tales and epic adventures to amuse and delight. Come see all we have to offer at vorpletales.com, twitch.tv slash vorpletales, and youtube.com slash c slash vorpletales. Before we venture into a tale of steely glares and burning blood, please remember that due to adult language and the adult situations of this tale, we've rated it M for mature and strongly encourage listener discretion. And now, Kern, Slayer of Gods, please read us the events of the last chapter of our tale. Gladly. Kern doesn't know much about magic or psionics, but he understands the history lesson imparted by the pillar and heads back to the stairs. We haven't have time to lose, he says. The second level has even more wood here, threaded through the stone. There's a supernatural darkness past the archways, and Queso tests one by throwing a stone through. The wall shimmers green, and the rock lands, covered in some kind of slime. Jinan pokes it, and goes into complete hypothermic shock. Sake uses his new druid powers and brings her back up. Vesta tries to figure out if the ziggurat is alive. It is not. Sake's displacer beast pest, pest does not sense the presence of other creatures. Queso peers down the hallway using her dark vision and realizes it's not actually super supernaturally dark. It's just a whole lot of obsidian. Jinan activates her beacon power to create a soft blue light and steps into the corridor. Sake notices there's something wrong with the ceiling, and a pseudopod lashes out at Vesta, drawing water out of her. She drives her blade into it, but can't tell if she's done sufficient damage or not. Queso lets loose with her hand axes, which also sink into it and suggests running away. Sake brings out a torch and throws it at the pseudopod while Dinan tries to stab it, but hits the wall instead. She realizes this is the remains of an earth elemental that Kalak had tortured, and it's invulnerable to many attack types, except fire. Burn it, that's the only thing that will work, she calls out. Kern responds by trying to lure it into one of the prismatic walls that throws Dinan. Dricht fires an energy beam. It leaps and lands atop Vesta doing more damage to her. Queso quickly ties the axes together with a length of rope, throwing one at the monster and one at the prismatic wall. It begins glowing orange. Vesta is wrenched free by Sake's, by Sake's displacer beast. Jinan dashes downstairs to grab another torch. Drick, meanwhile, attacks again, pushing it into the prismatic wall. Under the force of more relentless attacks, it splits into two smaller blobs. Sake dispatches one, Jinan returns with a torch, jamming it into one of the smaller blobs, killing it. Looking for the next pillar, we find it covered in runes. Vesta can't make heads or tails of it, but Jinan and Drikchik can. Drikchik in particular reaches out and absorbs the power of the pillar. After the progenitors almost destroyed the world, the Green Age began. 
forests and wildlife spread over the world as the land reshaped into mountains and valleys. The progenitors had to reshape themselves into beings who could survive. Thus were born the races of Athos. Sensing their devolution, they created themselves as Pyrene, who were tall, elegant, and stately. Except one was jealous, ugly, and spiteful. He taught preserver magic to all, except his favorites, to whom he thought he taught defiling magic for the sake of power. Uh, over the centuries, he began telling his favorites his true intentions to restore the Blue Age. He assigned one race to each of his 13 followers and charged them with destroying them. Only the halflings would survive. Meanwhile, he began experimenting with, with the pristine tower and became akin to a demigod. This was Rajat, the first sorcerer king of Athos. Some of his followers were ultimately successful and several races were driven to extinction. Only the Thrycreen dwarves successfully defended themselves. Rajat's Lieutenant Boris realized that Rajat would not let any of his 13 live and rallied against him. The resulting battle destroyed an entire continent, ending with Rajat trapped in his tower. The only way to stop him was by channeling the power of the pristine tower into a single person. Boris became the dragon, but at the cost of his humanity and insanity. Thus began the Brown Age. Drichik becomes a preserver with a specialty in abjuration. We move to the next level of the ziggurat. It's full of tables, alembics, and even stranger items. But any materials used are gone. Whatever job was being done up here has finished. And there are a lot of guards here. Fortunately, they're fighting each other. Half of them are bowing to Kern, and we can hear the thunderous chanting of Kern, Kern, Kern from outside. The pillar here is made out of pure white alabaster with liquid silver runes. Queso immediately starts trying to dig the silver out of the pillar. They begin flowing out of the pillar and across her skin and explain the history of the Brown Age. Each of Rajat's old followers tried to follow Boris' footsteps and turn themselves into dragon gods as well. For Boris' demands, tribute 1,000 souls a month to keep Rajat imprisoned. To do this, they channel elemental power to their followers. Queso gains this power, along with the ability to channel air in a huge rush of energy. We take a moment to scavenge some very nice metal arms and armor before ascending. All that's left is Kalak. He's on a dais surrounded by fire and an energy barrier as he is slowly but surely transforming into a dragon. Recognizing us, he screams in rage, a terrible psychic assault. We're all up, but barely. Kern yells back and dives through the fire to grab a hold of the spear still in Kalak's body. He just manages to make it, though he takes significant damage crossing the barrier. He hoists himself up and shoves the spear further forward, lodging it into the stone behind Kalak. Drickchik attacks one of the death guards, but they resist and respond with a hammer swing. His chitin cracks under the blow and he is flung across the room. The other death guard power slams it. Sake casts healing word and tries to douse some of the flames. Jinan evaluates Kalak and the Death Guards and then calls out, Go for the helmets! Queso is a bit of an overachiever and kicks one of them into the pit. Vesta leaps off Queso and tries to land on the dais. Thunder damage knocks her down and deafens her. Everyone except Kalak and his Death Guards go up in the air and are slammed into the floor. Vesta is knocked out as the spear rips out of Kalak, but Kern holds it still. After giving himself a second win, he uses an arena trick to evac execute a finishing move. He tears through Kallax's decrepit heart, and Kallax lashes out with a devastating psychic assault. Drickchik targets the remaining Death Guard, or its helmet. Confused, the Death Guard turns away from Dr Drickchik and leaps at Kallax. Sake revives Vesta. Now that Kallax is vulnerable to psychic damage, Jinan attacks his mind. Queso follows up with one of her 
new air spells and zaps him with a chromatic orb, shooting a lightning. Vesta goes for the ankle and draws blood. Kalak pulls himself up, coughing blood, and whispers to Kern, You have no idea what you've started, son. I hope you're ready for the price you'll pay. He collapses onto the spear and dies, releasing a tremendous wave of psychic energy. He was clearly a load-bearing boss as the ziggurat begins collapsing. The psychic energy trapped in his body goes straight for Jinan, and she collapses as radiant energy seeps into her. Kern locks eyes with the dragon, which turns and flies away. Kern cheers. The dragon is clearly scared of us. But the ziggurat is literally melting. Kern grabs an unconscious Jinan, and the entire party flees. He addresses the people of the city bearing Kallax's head. For the first time in a millennia, dawn rises on a free city in Athos. Well done, Rachel. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. It has been eight weeks since the fall of Gallic. Most of Tyr is on the way to being rebuilt. Many things have changed. Uh, Vesta has chosen to join the Senator and Chief Templar to create a triumvirate that will rebuild this city in a new way, in a way that has not been seen on Athos in a millennium. After a series of tearful goodbyes and a hell of a going away party, she left your group. She still exists in the city, though. Uh, as for uh, Queso, Queso is busy overseeing the rebuilding of the silt docks that were heavily damaged in the riots. The mines are reopened. The slave pits are closed. The gladiator arena still exists. But now the people who fight, fight because they want to, fight for glory, for money. Even workers are paid. They're not really paid shit, but they're paid. Also, uh, the High Templar has instituted a rule of one liter of water per day to be given to every citizen. In addition to a, min a minimum of rations. To us in the modern world, it doesn't sound like much, but to the people of Athos and the city of Tyr, it's utopia. This is the city you find yourselves in now, ten weeks later. There's still lots to do, lots of things to fix, lots of politics to deal with, the fallout of a, century, of a thousand years of rule of a demigod, but you have this nagging feeling in the back of your heads that there's much left undone, including the return of two very important artifacts that you can tell when you touch them feel like they want to go home. This is not home. This is a dry, dead, waterless place. Who still needs to level up from last week? Uh, what? We're all six now, right? Yes. Did I level up? I gotta double check. I don't remember if I did. Oh, well, you look. Yeah, so it's six, and but it's like your class plus whatever special thing we got from whatever pillar. We yeah, got. yeah. I, I have my yeah. I have my just six have... mystic, and then one in preserver. <clears throat> but I don't remember if I. Well, you don't. Oh, check I did. I turned yes, to yes, I did. Yes, I did. I have choices for you, Janan. Would you okay. like to, would you like to add to your character? Empath. Guiding your companions with beneficial auras and enhanced healing. Occultist, seeking knowledge from psychic impressions and spirits. Or wilder, unleashing your emotions to debilitate your foes and channeling psychic power into all of your attacks. Oh, uh wilder sounds like a lot of fun. That's if you want to be a mind bender. If you want to be an icon of the land, you could be a heart. 
nurturing the strength and well-being of yourself and your allies. A noble, inspiring your allies by example, leading from the front. Probably not. <laughs> a warrior, devastating your foes by embracing your thirst for battle. This is essentially a psychic warrior path. Or if you want to go the way of the aesthetic, you could become a soul knife. Follow the path of the monk. Okay. Uh, list those off for me again, please. Empath. Occultist. Wilder. Heart, noble, warrior, soul knife. I think I'm going to go empath. Okay. So this will be your 6-1. This will be the 1 part of your 6. You won't get hit points from it because you get your hit points from your primary class, but you get all the powers from it. Which are the following things. Four additional Psi points. Your Psi limit will be from level six obviously because it's higher uh three talents and five augments in addition to what you already have augments are psionic powers uh okay what uh talents do you already have Talents or disciplines? Talents, the, the cantrips. Uh, I have beacon, light step, and mind meld. Okay. You can now choose from autonomous vitality. I'll have to tell you what these are in a minute. Inertial transference, mind blade, mind link, mystic displacement, primal metabolism, psychic static, sixth sense, verb. I'm going to need to pick three of those in a moment here. Uh, additionally, while you are focusing on a psionic talent, mm -hmm. that means a discipline, some of these words are interchanged, and not wearing armor, your AC is 10 plus dex plus wisdom. Which, why would you never be in stance? So basically all the time. Okay. As an empath, at level 1, you gain the power Psychic Council, which basically gives you the Guidance Cantrip from the Magic List. Even though it works as Clairsentience and it's Psionic. And when you reach 3rd level, you'll be able to spend Psy Points while concentrating on that Guidance Cantrip to cast, cast Augury as well. Does that mean I can do it right now? Yes. Awesome. More things will happen when that part of your level actually hits higher level. Powers. Scrolling. <laughs> okay. Gonna go to the cantrips first. I had this uh, question when you were done with Rachel. Yes. Uh, you gain autonomous vitality as a psychometabolism cantrip. <laughs> I'm gonna read this for the audience just because it's fun. You amplify the sound of your heartbeat, radiating your own vitality outward and sinking your allies to your life force until your focus ends. When a creature within range rolls a death saving throw, you can use your reaction to give them advantage. Oh. Nice. There's that one. Don't die. Mm -hmm. I am not planning on it. Finding the ones that are most appropriate. Hold on. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, do you have mind thrust? I don't think so. No. You do now have an attack cantrip. Nice. It's in your side. And just for fun, a really strange form of mage hand called Mystic Displacement. With an audible thumb thrum, you extend your senses out around you, reaching through the folds of space to manipulate objects until your focus ends. You can use your action to teleport a loose object you can see within 30 feet of you to another location within range. It can't weigh more than 10 pounds, and it can't be worn or carried. Doesn't float though, so if it appears in midair, it falls. I mean, that's a useful battle tactic. <laughs> and. Two new powers. Let me find them. Wait, was it two? How many did I tell you you got? Three. Three new powers. Okay. Well, uh, three talents and five augments. Five. Okay. Now, the way these work, this class is layered on top of the Scion. So these powers are all augments of those initial cantrips. Those initial cantrips are concentration, and they basically last until you stop concentrating, like indefinitely. So when they're active, then these powers are usable. This first one is for your beacon that you already have. When you're using your beacon, you can do that. Hour of Comfort. Choose up to three targets among yourself and your allies that you can see, and they can all add an additional d4 to saves. Per, per use. Neat. I think I already have that power. I do. Because yeah, I have the mental of joy discipline. For, oh, okay. For Kallus, mm. yeah. Then we will switch it to Fury. Same thing, but it adds damage to whoever you pick when they hit. Nice. That one I don't have. When you're using your Mystic Displacement, you can now damagingly teleport. You can teleport parts of people off of themselves. <laughs> oh god, that's so gross. That's nice. Rad. This one is to detach to autonomous vitality and is the healing power. Body adjustment. Hit points equal to five plus the ability modifier of your psionic power. Nice. You can also overpower it to do more. I know it says self, but uh, this is a touch range if you use it on other players. Additionally. It's three. We need two more. So is this a direct result of Kallax, uh psionic energy imbuing her, or is yes. this like still from level six? Okay, got it. Nope. This <laughs> is her. Sense. Yep. Disconcerting lash. Which is a psychic attack that also makes them not able to move. This is obviously used when you have Mind Thrust active as your... Uh, augment. Mm -hmm. One to go. So 
so many good ones in here that don't apply to your character. Hoping to find one more healing power. Just nothing but like offensive psionic attacks. <laughs> I mean, that would be appropriate if you picked a different path, yes. You're a telepath, basically, with your base class, right? Uh, yeah, essentially. And the last one. You're good. Just because there was no healing one, and this one's hilarious. You may have telepathic <laughs> slap. Fun. Your eyes flare at a moment of concentrated telepathic anger as you lash out at one creature you are telepathically communicating with. A target makes a save, and on a failed save, takes one die ten psychic slap damage. Psychic and disadvantage slap to <laughs> disadvantage to their next mental saving throw. Ooh, that's 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 a nice little thing. I love it. Okay. Everyone else is good with their new powers. The Drew is good. The Evangion is good over there. Uh, I have, I have, so, okay. I'm, because I think I got confused last week. Mm hmm. But maybe I didn't. So, is my preserver counting as multi classing? No, you are dual classing. Almost like 2E. Almost okay. like this is a 2E converted campaign. Okay. So you get all the special powers of both classes, but you only get skills, saving throws, hit points, and extra attacks from the primary. So you get all of the spell casting from the Preserver, all of the powers that come at each level, except ability score boost. Right. And then everything else comes from your original class. Okay. So I do need But it also means every time you level up, both level up. So when you hit level 7 as ticket you'll hit level two as preserver just wanted to make Turn. sure what yeah. did i give you for your secondary class i don't even remember you didn't that's what <laughs> i thought so which way would kern like to go um i'm sure um he's just uh he's always been a glider and he's been a warrior so he magic and psionics kind of confuse him and he's just kind of like ah leave me out of it you know <laughs> so i don't know if it would uh, lean into something like that okay second 
Okay. And you are barbarian currently. No, gladiator currently, which is a barbarian. Okay. Yeah, the case of the barbarian, ironically. <laughs> Not anymore. Case ah. has also been modified. Let's give you What do you think, players? What do you think, audience? Where should we go with Kern? More disciplined with his fighting or more wild? Mm. I mean, how did Kern react to being the one to kill Kalak? Yeah, what was the what was the mental effect? <laughs> he, was, he was happy he was gone, but uh, he's nervous now probably because he uh, received that ominous last uh, message as he died, like, oh, you have no idea what you've done. And now he's, like, maybe second-guessing himself, I suppose, or maybe not as wild <laughs> as he once was, I don't know. In hearing that, in More hearing cautious. that, that uh, threat, would it make you want to hone your skills more or question yourself to the point where you become wild? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I mean, there's also like you you gained your freedom. Mm hmm. Hmm. I like Dwayne's suggestion. Yeah, like he uh, he he's becoming wilder in in the way that he's uh, now that he's free, like he doesn't feel as constrained, so perhaps more. Unpredictable. Looser. Yeah, a little more, more predict unpredictable, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I am going to send you this, and we'll just highlight the important things for now, but you can use it. There you go. We'll give you that. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> so, at level one, also, uh, at level, not also, at level one, you'll gain uh, pit grit and scars of the pit, and your unarmed attack die will move up to a d6. And it basically gives you flurry of blows. And then scars at the pit means you get strength plus con to your AC if you're not armored. The class he's got is kind of like a monk, but a gladiator. Oh, shit. What That's was the second cool. thing before? Uh, you said flurry of blows. Uh, you That's get, pit uh, grit is flurry of blows, and scars of the pit is uh, your AC when you're not armored is strength plus con plus 10. Oh. What's your Okay. Okay. And then your unarmed attack dies at D6 when you punch. Or uh, gauntlets, brass knuckles, anything that involves your fists. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Strength plus con. Oh, shit. So by my default armor class without any armor on is 19. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. That does not stack with dexterity, I suspect. No. Okay. So it, over, it overrides that, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> all right, nice. <laughs> yes, your armor class is 10 plus all of your attributes. <laughs> My major attributes are just strength and constitution, four and five respectively, yeah. Holy cow. Do I get, is that a, 
So I, it's a uh, Pit Fighter One, essentially. Yes. Without the hit points or skills or any, just the powers. Okay, cool. Are there any limitations on arcane spells that I could learn? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Checking. Preserver. Nope, does not say there's limitations on your spells. I thought it uh, pretty hilarious to take uh, shape water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get to use that, you know, once a campaign, probably. It's fine. So, it's a beautiful morning in Athens. No, it's not. It's terrible. Yes. Sake. Well, I, I was just like, can Trick Trick and Sake work in unison? Because Sake can create water. Could they do tandem spells together? You should totally, sure. totally let us do tandem spells together. Anyway. Done. Ow. <laughs> okay. You all wake up in your newly appointed quarters in what was formerly the Palace of Kalik. Sheets. A soft bed. A pillow with feathers in it. Shade. <laughs> Something unnatural about all of this. <laughs> Kern probably slept, slept for a couple weeks on the floor just because like, he didn't know what to do. Probably. <laughs> um, Sake didn't take over a bedroom. He just took over the stable. And all the animals in it. Wait, you took over the stable and all the animals in it? Well, he started taking care of them. He's not going to like, these are all mine. You can't have them. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but it makes him happy to take care of them. So he kind of just lives in the stable and like takes care of all the animals. That the palace had. Or that you guys bring home like I'm not opposed to you guys bringing home puppies from the street like go ahead <laughs> I could just see Trick Trick it come, come just come back to the palace with a little puppy I oh, can't it. eat this one Stop. yeah if it, yeah if it was a, you, you would you would bring them back and then they would just randomly disappear mm -hmm. I mean I can see <laughs> Uh, bringing back a puppy that she found because uh, she's not used to having her own room and it's lonely and weird. Mm. Speaking of lost puppies, uh, I would imagine uh, Urgoth is, is with us still from the, he should the be. riot that we had ensued. Uh, Urgoth works in the palace now, yes. Very good. I would have, or Kern would have tried to uh, return the spear that uh, that he used to kill Kalak uh, to Sidira, I believe is the one that Sidira hit, uh, yeah. says only you can return the spear because it's yours now. Oh, well, he has questions. <laughs> like, how to return this exactly to somebody who's dead? We must travel somewhere far away that you wouldn't believe exists. Across the be? desert, around the mountains. Is, is not buried out there in the wastes? Look at this spear you hold. What is it made out of? Not made of wood, of course. A tree, but is it, I imagine. But is it wood like the wood you've seen? No, this is different. It's alive. Full of sap and water. Where do you think that came from, the desert? Oh, I think I'm beginning to understand now. 
This is a different kind of magic here than this. I will. It comes from a place that is green. Green? I thought that was the legend. What is the name of this place? Okay. During this conversation, she would pull out a map that you are now looking at. This is you. Real. On the other side of the mountains that everyone believes are un impassable. A ridge of jungle. Very well. I'll and in the middle of that jungle, there. a place called the Crystal Forest. That is where these artifacts came from. That is where this tree came from. And that is where I must go, then. For honor. And with that, he'll, uh, he'll try to bring everybody together once more. It's like, hey, I gotta go take this out there, so if you're coming with, come along. <laughs> like, I'm going. <laughs> To I this like, forest. You're not going by yourself, <laughs> that's for damn sure. If you bring them all together with you, what they will tell you is that there are two choices. Let's head out of Tyr down the Great Road, around the Dragon Horns, across uh, the Great Alluvial Sand Wastes, past Kaladne. And through the Pass of Cold to Kulug. Your other choice is to go over the Ringing Mountains. I don't know if that's a good idea. So which appeals to you more? <laughs> Traveling across the desert, either on a silt ship where you'll be charged an outrageous amount by a bunch of pirates who would sooner leave you dead than take you to your destination, or ride on the platform of a giant who might just drop you off on an island to feed his brothers and sisters. Or cross the Ringing Mountains and deal with Shudder, the Gith. <laughs> Marauder, marauders who make the elves look tame. Uh, can Queso get us a discount with the pirates? <laughs> <laughs> Legitimate question. <laughs> uh, he can put you with the ones, so he can't afford his own silt, silt ship yet. Yes, he can try to influence the role with the pirates, but once you're out on the open desert... What? I mean, we're the liberators of Tyr. We might be able to secure at least the safe passage from, you know, to and fro without, like... What if we just uh, put together our from... own caravan? <laughs> mm -hmm. The caravan can't cross the great alluvial sand waste. Uh, you either need a silt ship or you need a giant. A true giant, not like your friend half-giant. Uh, so... What about animals? Even the animals would get bogged down in the quicksand of the alluvial waste. So I'm in favor of either the silt ship, because the dragon seems risky, or the, the giant seems risky. Hmm. Uh, second option would be face the gif. Hmm. And crossing the silt sea is dangerous enough as it is. The giants aren't as bad as they've been made out to be. We may be able to come to some sort of an accord with them. But the Gith, uh, the Gith will have you for breakfast. No caravan will survive traveling through those mountains. We need to make our choices carefully here. Okay, so can deliver with the pirates. We might be able to secure decent enough travel where we're going. Go through the pass, and then enter into the forest ridge. Seek out this crystal forest. I will be honest. I am not at home in the mountains. The sands <laughs> are where I arrive. I think I speak to most of, most of us when I say the same is true for the rest of us, except for maybe sake. I was born in the desert, same as most. I say my vote is for 
the pirate. Push mm. comes to shove. We could probably overpower them if they decide to try and pull a fast one. That too. I'm more confident we can kill a pirate crew than a true giant. <laughs> Not that I'd want to, but if we have to. What about you, Yams? As I said, the sands are where I where I find home, where I find comfort. The sands it will be then, to high hell with the gift, he says and spits over his shoulder. Oh, it's it's been eight weeks, right? Yes. So probably during this time Ritz would have disappeared for a day or two at a time. And just walked out of tier. Hmm. Walked out of tier, okay. Yes, walked out of tier. And then just showed up like two or three days later. And then would stick around for two or three days and then leave again the last time that he was gone on the sixth week he was gone almost the entire week but he brought something back with him he found his sloth pet <laughs> a sloth pet yes it is the thing that I was given at the beginning of the game <laughs> yes <laughs> I have an Athasian sloth. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. So it's just like wrapped around your neck or something. It's just kind of like. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. No, he is writing this. Oh! Okay. That's <laughs> right. Like this is like a battle mount. In Australia. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got you. Cool, you gotta ride. Sure, it'll serve us well. He'll uh he'll talk to Queso and be like uh we need to talk we need to have you uh, talk with these uh, silt pirates, see if you can get us where we need to go without any backstabbing, understood? Which just makes him snicker. Uh, even Queso cannot guarantee he will not be backstabbed by the pirates, but he can get you a good deal. Uh, I guess the other question is, do we want to use our celebrity with these pirates, or do, do we want to try to remain incognito during our trip? I don't think... Is that an option? Yeah, We're pretty that's well known. Question. Could be. We can make it an option, I suspect. All of my people look very similar. <laughs> but there's only one Yams, and he helped to kill the god recently. Only yeah, I'm, I'm, one I'm sure that yams. I am noticeable. I am noticeable by the huge chunk of chitin that is still missing. Exactly. with the question so, to the rest of the group. Uh, what was the question for the group? Uh, should we use our newfound celebrity to secure, to, you know, influence the, the pirates uh, uh, you know, transfer and, you know, I mean, I'm, of us to the kitchen? I'm more, like, I, I kind of want to give this job to Queso and then just trust her, like, to find the crew that is least likely to betray us and then <laughs> it's up to her whether she tells them who we are or not. Ah. Okay. Yeah, either that or we activate incognito mode. <laughs> if we could. Sunglasses and large brim hats. <laughs> and scarf. <laughs> These are not the god killers you are looking for. Kern, I don't know what you mean. My name is Burn. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. Right. So Queso wanders off and returns a day later. Absolutely sure she found you a great crew. Seems she seems a little tipsy and drunk, but I'm sure it's fine. 
They're drinking buddies now. It'll be great. Oh, exactly. Yeah. All, all is well. They talk late into the night about summoning elder gods. It's fine. Oh god. <laughs> What preparations are you going to make? Uh, lots of water, water skins for all of us. Uh, you know, typical rations for, uh, for trailing, just in case we have to hoof it on the, in the open desert. Or do uh, sand shoes exist like snowshoes? Uh, probably. For where you're going, they won't help. But yes. Don't know that they won't help. Anyway, uh, I also have a question about our animals. Is the silt ship capable of housing our animals along with us? Uh. uh. Let's see, how many does this hold? I put the picture in Discord. Sand Dragon uh, functions as a trireme. Which means... I don't think that's gonna hold. Uh, it could hold... 200. 30 crew, 170 roars. Okay. Nice. Does that... Okay, so... How, how many people does a sloth, a displacer beast, and whatever else we have between the, the, the other three... My sloth is only large. Oh, only large. <laughs> the displacer beast takes up as much room as steak. Yeah, it's a medium-sized creature. Well, the sloth is about the same size as your friend, the half-giant. Okay. Okay. Just as long as that is accounted for. That is all I care about. Your friend, the half-giant, however, is going to remain in the castle and help run the royal guard. Oh, we're gonna miss Urgoth. Sadir is going with you, though. Oh, nice. The Amber Enchantress. I don't yes. trust her. <laughs> She's only you been hell, nothing but helpful. Nope, I don't trust redheads. <laughs> they are untrustworthy. Uh, wool blankets, anything like that that would help with the when the sun goes down in the desert because it gets cold as fuck out there, so yeah, imagine some... whatever provisions we would need for that. Uh, S SPF 9000. <laughs> what about your rowers? What about our rowers? Uh, normally they'd be slaves. How do you want to handle that? Drick and Kern will... Uh, Round up as many of the freedom fighters that were in the riot and let them all know that we are going on this journey. And those who wish to follow the great Kern, step forward now. Uh, you get a lot of volunteers, but they also want paid. Volunteers don't get paid. <laughs> That, 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 well, I'm just saying, that's counterintuitive of saying this that they volunteer. This is more of, of an adventure internship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, say they are willing I, to help us for pay. I don't really don't think we should start the dawn of a new era with labor exploitation. I'm we could pay them yep, in water. Yep. That's the wrong word. <laughs> uh, it, it largely depends on whether or not... Uh, Okay, so it's like, yeah, you're good to go. They don't know who you are. Yeah, you should totally tell them who you are, etc. Uh, in which case, I mean, um, it would we... just set them all free. Like, you're free to do whatever you want, you know? Couldn't we just, like, requisition a budget from Vesta? Could. She's a senator now, I guess. <laughs> and we have Tithian uh, as an ally. For now. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be That's the wrong word, this. but Tithian is there <laughs> and will talk to you, yes. <laughs> Not instantly kill yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, we are doing it at their behest. No, uh, you're not doing it at Tithian's behest. No. You're doing so it at Sadira's behest. Yeah, this is Sadira's request uh, originally. That they return this uh, the spear to where it belongs. 
How long and is yes. the journey supposed to take? Hmm. If everything goes smoothly, snicker, two weeks to get <laughs> to the pass. And then, so they would, and then they need to row back. Yes. Um, what is a decent month's pay? Decent? Yes. It's 28 times 2, 56 ceramic. Is that a lot? It used to be to you. Not anymore. That be copper <laughs> the equivalent? Each? Yes. Times 170. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out my calculator. <laughs> There goes Wait. the budget. <laughs> ceramic, ceramic is silver, right? The equivalent of silver. So that's essentially, eight thousand five hundred ceramic. Well, yes. No. no, that's even more because I only did fifty. You said seventy-six or seventy-five. Fifty-six. Oh, yeah, fifty-six. What's his base in the? Nine thousand five hundred and twenty ceramic pieces. <laughs> Where? You can get it. Can we? Well, the question is, how are you going to get it? Ah, that I think is a, a task best uh, given to Jinan. Uh, <laughs> Kern will just just be like, I don't deal with this poli political wrangling, her strings and so on. I don't deal well with that. I mostly meant, are you going to try to? salvage it from somewhere adventure for it or take it out of the city's coffers you can oh uh, i was just gonna say like i i, I thought then, we sacked considerable amounts of wealth after we deposed calic and like you know oh yeah we could go back and like get all that obsidian and sell that <laughs> you can take it out of the city coffers but that's less money for the people of tier mm. I don't fully understand what this How could we funny piece for thing it? is. <laughs> uh, well, there are several rumors of interesting things happening. One, uh, now that they've re-entered the old iron mines, which were almost tapped out but not quite, Calic was still having them stripped, but he refused to go into the older, deeper parts of the mines. Now that they've begun to, uh, workers are reporting strange supernatural disturbances and they refuse to go deeper. You could go in and see what the disturbance is. If you can clear out the mine, the flow of iron would resume and the flow of iron would be even larger than it was under Calic and iron is money. Two, there are rumors that Yurik has heard that Calic is dead and he has mobilized his army to head across the wastes to hmm. have a chat with the <laughs> walls of Tyr. Yeah, I'm sure. The rumor is the armies of Yurik are marching to Tyr. Dealing with that would be a lot of money, sacking an army. Uh, what, is, what is known of this army? How many, how many heads? They probably don't know that yet. Yeah. Let's see. Hominu. Liberate the mine. Let's uh, work for the city. And it's metal. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, if an army is on their way here, I'm in favor of opening the iron mines because that's going to be useful. I have a problem playing a neutral character because Savannah's a chaotic good person. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to leave our city when there's an army approaching it. <laughs> that seems counterintuitive to what we just accomplished. Nothing's been verified yet, though. These are just rumblings. Which is to be expected. I mean, you know. Yeah, so, okay. Fucking God just we got the phone. We are. Too. Where? Yurik. Has 30 to 32,000 citizens and that many again slaves. 
Okay, so we're so. in here. And mm -hmm. where is the place? Oh, it's up here? Northeast. This That's is your the, correct. This is the, uh, yeah, the okay. crystal forest is over here. So the army would yeah, be coming around. from like this dirt? Would it be uh, on this Eric. side of the... Eric is north of Tyr. Somebody ping it again? It's right yeah, here. There's... So I'm just yep. saying they would be coming this way up. You are correct. Yeah. They will take the road and avoid the sand waste as much as possible. There is no road. This is the road. Yeah, the, the, red the red lines are the road. Okay, so they would actually be coming this way. Yeah. Um, Correct. Could we coordinate some riders along whatever the heck this road is called? Great the, road. The Great Road. <laughs> the Great Road. Um, some riders to see if we can confirm those rumors. Or... Yes, you could send scouts, or you could do it yourselves. I, I mean, I think we would like to confirm before we go. I volunteer for this mission. Or, Sake could just, you know, band together some of his Aarakocra buddies, and we they can all, like, fly out there, which is super quick. It would be true if it wasn't for the sandstorms and the massive winds coming down from the north. Shut up. <laughs> is that the... This... <laughs> there is nothing easy to do in Athos when you leave the city. <laughs> <laughs> Half of a Dark Sun campaign is survival check. Rain. Yep. Isolos does have a speed of 50. Well, I mean, I, yeah. Or that, or I was going to suggest whatever the freaking, like, speed lizards that we used to get to the temple super quick we could get a like two or three of those and and do it ourselves they have the best survival of the desert and the quickest speed or one of the quickest speeds so you would uh have to it would be the, the start of the, the uh, uh, voyage would be the same thing you would have to take a land caravan of some kind down the great road to the alluvial sand waste. You would have to take a ship or a giant across the sand waste. Then you would need another caravan to take you from either Alterus or the Silver Spring up north around the Dragon's Bowl. So, called that because that's where the dragon hangs out. To Yurik! So, okay. But they would also have to cross the sand waste. Correct. They will have a fleet of ships, probably, if it's an army. Okay. Um, who, who in our city would be in charge of defenses? Tithian, High Templar. Cool. Who has the best relationship with <laughs> the Templar? Janan. Cool. Um, um, I suggested that she would do the talky-talky. <laughs> the talky-talky? <laughs> well... If and when we confirm the army, we should have Tithian maybe start preparations for defending, or not defending, but like offenses like starting at the dock so they can't even dock on our side. outside the city, but that's fine. <laughs> Could set up a sand blockade. A sand blockade. If you say sandbags, you're fired, but you also get a hero point. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but I wasn't gonna. <laughs> mm. So, I'm kind of tempted to just let Tithian do his job and defend the city from the potential army and possibly just ask him like are the rumors true? If they are, how can we help? Yeah, the thing is Tithian's a snake and I don't think that's just out of play character knowledge. I think it's known, isn't it? Uh, is it not, uh, Tyler? He was, he was Kallak's right hand person. Uh, yes, uh, most trusted, which also means most untrusted, for a good reason, too. Um, yeah, Tithian, uh, 
is calling himself king. Mm. Former High Templar, now King of Tyr. Supposedly the most powerful and important man in the city, although he lacks the sweeping powers and absolute rule of Kallik, he is immensely popular with the masses, because he's hailed as the man who toppled the insane and sadistic rule of Kallik, opening the way for you to kill him, and who helped freed the oppressed slaves and created all these wonderful laws like free water every day. The king does nothing to change this attitude, although uh, he's not the psionic master Kallik was. He is an elemental master. He's also <laughs> surrounded by his council of advisors, the Senate. Uh, well, it used to be the Senate, but the Senate was abolished after the revolution because most of the senators huh. were corrupt. In its place, Tithian and... Uh... Oh, man, what's his name? Crap. I, I swear, I swear uh, I've heard Aegis. this. Senator Aegis set up the... Uh the uh, council of advisors they are elected by their equals and they come from different classes nobles templars craftsmen paupers and even former slaves it's all politics still though uh there's also the nobles who still exist they're stripped of senator rank but they're still wealthy and old families the templars still exist too as a force that are now the army and the police <laughs> this sounds Where's like the plot of a certain this? movie uh the other factions in the city are the craftsmen, the free farmers, the tenant farmers, the dispossessed, the merchant class. Dispossessed are everyone who used to be slaves and hasn't found a house or a job yet. In that uh, arena, where does uh, our friend Vesta fit in exactly? If uh, Vesta is on the council. Vesta was voted oh, in okay. the council. Oh, okay. So there you go. We have an in with her. You have a voice on the council, essentially, is how Vesta works mm -hmm. now, yes. You have a mouthpiece on the council. And usually you could sway Aegis. Technically, right. too. We can talk to him, and, uh, yeah, we have a Vesta to voice our, uh, our concerns or requests to King Tithian. Well, get us. Is that what you wanted to start with and see what happens? The free so, city tier will put up for a vote. <laughs> Janan, you go to see your old your old boss. Uh, yeah. Tithian does grant you audience, and does tell you, scrying through the waters because he's a water cleric, a water templar. Uh, he was in fact able to determine that an army is marching from Yurik, thirty-six thousand strong, every slave in the city essentially. Uh. Well, actually, it's about half the slaves and half not slaves to keep the slaves in line. Uh, but he can't know much more than it is marching towards you because the power of uh, Hamanu prevents him because he's not a sorcerer king. Hamanu's magical sh psionic shields are stronger than Tithian can pierce. But he is an army that big, even Hamanu can't hide. Tyr has 65,000 citizens, but... Uh, don't know if you can muster that much of an orderly organized army without slaves. Well, free people want to defend their homes. To, well, this is Tithian talking. Tithian's point of view is, if you can't control them, it won't work. <laughs> uh, yes, your party would assume that these people would fight for their new free home, free lives, rather than be dragged back into slavery in Eric. Uh, also, there's rumors that Colonel just kill Hamanu, too. Why not? That's what he does. <laughs> um, uh, Tithian has, command, has appointed generals. And he says, I've got generals appointed. We're raising the army. It's good enough for me. So is there anything that we can do to help? He would not have anything specific he would want from you. But it doesn't mean you can't go strike out on your own and try to do something. Would opening the iron mines help? Armor and weapons, yes. 
an entire city full of people armed with iron weapons? Uh, yeah. That would make a difference. Alright. Uh, I thank him for his time and then return to the group with that. Sixty thousand plus people traveling through the desert. How long estimate do we have before they could arrive within striking distance of the city? A month. That kind of mass doesn't move quickly through the open desert. Not if you don't want to lose <laughs> half of them along the way. So if we want to get the iron out of those mines and start making, uh, manufacturing weapons and armor in anticipation of a potential war with Uruk, we need to get to it like immediately. Because, you know, we go traveling out to the Crystal Forest is going to take minimum two weeks plus half a week, maybe, if we're lucky to get there quickly, and then two weeks when we get back, so. So we should, I say, we should stay, and we should open up the mine, get that turning out metal again, and go from there. Of course, this was uh, confirmed by Thithian. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't think there is right. any way for us to do our own confirmation. Not with uh, the resources we have. But we should probably do what's right for the city first. The other friend Janon has. You have friends who are preservers. Right? That's Sidira. Sidira is the leader of the Veiled Alliance. Okay. Um, does Sidira have anyone among, among her ranks that would have similar powers of viewing? Not that could break Hamanu's protections. Got it. He'll speak with Sadira then and just say like, all right, we obviously need to return this, this spirit to its rightful place, but if we don't do something in the interest of the city before we do so, we may not have a home to come back to. Uh, so he'll, he'll say like, that's going to be my first priority, you know, um, after this, is, this incursion with the mines is over. He's going to, you know, see to it that it gets taken to where it needs to go. In the meantime, my friends require my help. We're going to delve into and investigate what's going on in these iron mines. Let's go. That seems like a good spot to take a mid-show break. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, audience. I can talk. We'll be back in about ten minutes.
mines. What are you going to do? The mines are two miles outside of the city, at the base of the mountains. We can the truck it out called... there. And we have uh, requisitioned some mounts. Uh, Drickta can uh, mount his uh, sloth, giant sloth. Yes. The mountains that have been dubbed the Ringing Mountains. Because they do when you're in valleys and nooks and crannies with crags between them or when you're in caves underneath of them. A constant howling ring. A pandemoniac sound that can burrow into your brain, causing what miners like to call the Hedgekin Curse. Spend enough time in the mine and you're in, you, in, in the mine and your mind falls apart and you go mad, only you actually devolve into something monstrous. It's okay for the miners because they don't go in for more than a few days at a time, but if you need to get to the old mines, it's at least a week's travel into the earth. Fun. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in Athos kills you, Drick. <laughs> Is there a way to do, like, mind shields? You could probably fairly well protect your own. Yeah. These non-scions? Can you buy a psionic effect to be cast on you that'll last a week? No. Okay. <laughs> well... Uh, I can just, <coughs> excuse me, uh, keep my beacon of recovery on, uh, which allows you to perpetually make saving throws, like a whole bunch. It will definitely help stave off the madness. Yeah, I don't think I have anything that would help. <laughs> this could be one of those situations where you know you're screwed and you walk in anyways. It's up to you. <laughs> Try sticking cotton balls or something in your ears. Good luck. Um, yeah, like if we would um, analog solution like that work. Analog solution? Or like non mundane is the word I meant. Like oh. everybody puts earplugs in so they don't hear the ringing. That does not work for the miners. Okay. Maybe at first, but not when enough time has passed. Mm -hmm. Well, if we want to do this, then maybe just double time it. I have no problem with this. I'm probably thinking too far ahead. But if we are <clears throat> hesitant that we're going to go mad going a week's in to the earth to clear out this mine because we need more iron, wouldn't the people who would need to mine just go mad trying to get this iron that's that, that far into the earth? This curse is what you have to go in and clear out. That's the reason they're not, yes. This oh. is why you have to do the thing. I did not pick up on that part. Because <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck is the point if they're just going to go crazy? Okay. <laughs> Got it. Oh, this is the disturbance that they were talking about. This is the disturbance in the force. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean... Not really that many options. No, and I definitely don't have anything. Okay. If you're not, your head bone will protect you. <laughs> well, yeah, could, I mean, could we get like Magneto style don't fuck with my head helmets made? Let's <laughs> get oh. some scrap metal helmets. Any kind of material that could be used to form those would be in the mine. Mm. I was going to say that, actually, you bring up a really good point, Rachel. Uh, the Death Guard that survived the uh, the showdown with Kallak. 
we've had eight weeks to uh, question him and get any and all information that we can from them. Like, is there anything that uh, he could tell us about himself or what Calic was, was perhaps alluding to when he died? Like, you have no, no idea what you've done, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, because uh, those, well, those were Helmets helmets of mind have. control. Yeah, but they also effectively blocked out psionics. So if whatever the disturbance is, is psionic in nature, it'll protect you, I think. Yeah, could we get a hold of some, like, surplus Death Guard helmets? Um, those... He only had four made, and you dropped two in a giant hole, and the other two Tithian has. One for himself, and one that he keeps as a spare for himself. Oh, hmm. so he's not going to lend us the spare for Kern? No. Okay. Because he's a dick. Okay. <laughs> Hold well, dick. Maybe the miners have some tips that we could pick up once we get there. Also, we're going to need a shit ton of rations. Why would we need rations? Are there not creatures in the mines? <laughs> if you want to eat what's in the mines, that's fine. Uh, I don't think that would be the same for Janan and Kern. You never know. Consuming their bones may give you the ability to resist this madness. Well, if that yeah, so it'll enough. poison you. If a Thrykreen could smirk, he would. <laughs> I think we probably just have to go down, force march our way through, and hope for the best. Okay. <laughs> Seems the best plan we got. Yeah. Gather our, our newly found weapons and armor and uh, delve into these mines. You make your way to the mines. city falls away behind you and the mountains loom ever closer leaning over you you can start to hear a howling wind when you're a half a mile away like a mournful wail that never stops uh, uh, not even there yet did you have what is the what is the weather like other than hot. Damn. Wimby? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say hot. Uh, very, very relentlessly bright. Um, so I am... Oh, that only lasts a minute, so I'm not going to turn that on now. Never mind. Um, wow. So it's just two... Just. It's just two miles outside of the city so that we'll get there in like a couple hours at most probably yes. too um Maybe because of like the heat we have mounts like oh yeah Maybe it'll less. probably take like an hour doesn't take long correct yeah. okay um so um in the mines themselves when we get there um is there like a cart or something that like we could either attach to my mount or to the jerk chickens <laughs> mount to help like carry the load because rations are heavy Yes, the the mines do have uh, a cart system. Okay. Either that, or we could have also just borrowed a mule. Not 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 Kern, like an actual. Too slow. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, 
I don't know which animal it would be best to attach to. To help carry supplies. I would suggest something that is not quick, yet not slow, and has very little intelligence. It will stave off the madness. So are you volunteering your sloth? I don't know what my sloth's intelligence <laughs> is. <laughs> and my sloth is not slow. Like, they are actually really fast. I know. I'm so fast. I, it does have a low intelligence. It is intelligence of two. I think that is lower than my displacer beast. It, it, it is, yes. So, by that logic, you win. The prize of the cart. All right, we will somehow fashion a cart onto this death sloth. Yeah, that's how uh, we can do it. Lash a couple lines here and there. Here, I'll help you. <laughs> One's All right, survival checks. See how good your knots are. <laughs> oh, I should probably. Oh man, okay. I just got my characters confused. Ugh. <laughs> In in home? our in our Patreon game, my character has the inability to tie knots. <laughs> That's <is one>. interesting. <laughs> Thirteen. Twenty. Where is my character sheet? Also, the audience gets to be entertained with my three D dice. Twelve. Scourge of Sorcerer Kings. I appreciate your character name. I don't think I put that there. Well, it's there now. I put those there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then my yeah, I don't I'm the my obsidian name. oracle now. Everybody got cool names. Nice. <laughs> Wrong with your name? <laughs> it says sake burb. <laughs> yep, <laughs> burb. I'm a burb. Somebody changed that. That is not what it said last time. <laughs> The no, it says Life Shaper. But everyone has like cool titles. Like Obsidian Oracle? That's cool. Life Shaper's <laughs> cool. Yeah. I want to be the Scourge of Sorcerer Kings. <laughs> I want to talk like that. Anyway, um, how important is it to make these rolls? I mean, Kern, Kern, well, this was just a tie knots, so I don't, Kern got a 20. Kern, Kern make good knots. Yes, if you rolled a 20, the knot was successfully crafted. There you go, see? Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, mini squeezy. I'm just not used to this style of rope. <laughs> Um, and then we can put not all. I think all of us should still keep a portion of our rations on us, but like the bulk of our gear should probably go on the cart. Just in case it disappears, we won't completely starve to death. <laughs> we got the supplies handled here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you scout ahead? We need eyes in the sky. Uh, just about anything out here will try to kill us. Would you do the honor's sake? Just <laughs> a sake, cock, like, cocks his head, because he's just like, are you going to fly? Like, where were you going with that sentence? Oh, yes. Pats his displacer beast on the head, and then takes off. To how tall is the mine shafts? Uh, once you actually enter into the mines, the shafts are very, very tall. Um, the ceilings are uh, 80 feet high in the entry cave. Oh, damn. Okay. They should be loading any second. Yup. I will adjust that for... Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm assuming we had... We healed. 
I just <laughs> I sure that. hope so. In eight, <laughs> eight weeks, yes. Oh, over eight weeks, yes. <laughs> We're lame. We can't heal anymore. I had one hit point, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> we healed, right? I don't have. I don't have dark vision. This is gonna be a problem. Well, this map doesn't have dynamic lighting, so you're hmm. fine. I know. I... I meant for actual scouting. This is gonna be a problem. That's because Janan is always running with a light source burden. Oh. Yeah, I can turn my body into a beacon. But you're not going up in the air with me. Oh. It's true. You're gonna need a torch or something. Okay, hold on. Let me figure out where the heck. Where are we starting? Over here? Southwest. Okay. Hold on. I gotta... I gotta fix the map for the audience. Okay. We are you can also here. see the size of the cart. It's very large. It could hold all of you easily oh, and your nice. pets. Which reminds me, I did not grab a pet. Oh, oh okay. Pet. Pet, oh, pet, dang. Pet. We're way down there. Yep. Yep. We're over here. Okay. <clears throat> so... Uh, do I have anything that could assist me? Torches. Besides something that's going to make me a giant target. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nothing. Okay, I'll just be a giant target. Other than this madness, are there... Has there been any talk of... Uh, creatures in these tunnels. You can now control your sloth, Drick. And that is the greatest token ever. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll a social roll of your choice. Or an investigate roll. Whatever's best for Drick. Also, what are Kern and uh, Janan's pets if you want them in this adventure? Oh. Nah. What is my pet? Um, I picked hmm. up an Enix. Thank you. And then... Sure. Did you say no, Eric? No, nah, I'm not going to take okay. my... Uh, we could all fit on one, one or the other. I'm, I'm fine. I'm without mine. And the curse of Drick continues. I rolled another 12. Oh, Glorious. <laughs> um... Using uh, druid craft sake, just kind of like puts his feathers over a torch and it lights up. And he's like, "Okay, how far ahead do you want me to go?" Hmm. To the point where, if you are injured, you can still return. <laughs> what he said. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Stay within the light if you can. Go forward until you don't die. <laughs> Your light or my light? <laughs> well, I, I think Janan's beacon light is greater than a torch's, is it not? Uh, yes. Let me look it up. Um, I can. I think with Sake's uh, flying, it's fifty. Yeah, it's bright light in a twenty-foot radius, and dim light. For another 20 feet, so that is uh, 80 foot diameter. Okay. Nice. Um, I think a normal torch is which is 15. I wanna yeah, I think so. 15 and 15, there's always an equal dim radius, but yeah. Too many windows. Okay. That's okay. me. Excuse you? Oh. This is Rachel's buddy, the picture which just yeah. came in large. Got it. I was just like, ah, <laughs> I did not approve. <laughs> Rachel's buddy is a large buddy. Mm -hmm. Is it like sitting on top of a sloth? Giant lizard. Mm hmm. You now control it. No, the sloth actually should be 
large as well. There you go. <laughs> Should it be ahead of the cart? Burp. Is this the cart that Yes, it's pulling. It's pulling. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. There. For now. And where would you like to go, Sake? I went forward, 50 feet. Yes. It is windy here and cold and dark. Why the fuck is it windy in the caves? That's an interesting question. The wind seems to be blowing from multiple directions, too, which is not normally how caves work. Can I roll a nature check? Sure. Nineteen. This is not natural. <laughs> um, it's fucking windy! <laughs> one source of the wind is coming from due north. One source of the wind is coming from northeast. Um, there's unnatural weather. So we've noticed. <laughs> we are um, in a cave. He's going to head due north to, uh, to that source first. One of the things is over this way as he continues to fly <laughs> off into the hallway. Weapons at the ready. When you get to here, uh -huh. you can see a collapse and something glowing uh, and, uh, a coral color from inside the collapse. Okay. And you have a horrible stinging migraine. Yes, it hurts. Again. We do we hear this, or are, are any of us in uh, telepathic communication with say that, uh, that? I doubt you're that far away. Or... That's a that's a yeah, 180 feet outside of my range. You can't see the light anymore either. I can no longer Shh. sense the feathered one. That's outside of everyone's dark vision and view radius. And because of the wind, you can't hear it either. You just hear one word across the wind. Wimby. Wind. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, can I make any... Fortitude wouldn't help me in this. So, no, because that's a constitution. <clears throat> After two minutes of non-contact, I will tell Ben to move forward. Ben, Did huh? I... <laughs> two minutes, huh? Two minutes. Oh, that's a long time. Excellent. Well, two rounds. Sake, I'm going to need you to roll <laughs> initiative, sake. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to click your icon. It's fine. Guys, when you find me dead at the end of the tunnel, know that I was a good bird. <laughs> I was the best burb you ever knew. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, the howling seems to change somewhat. Mm -hmm. Less of a howl, more of a scream. Uh huh. As something comes rolling out of the coral light. Oh. Like a roly poly rolling out? Maybe, hold on. If we're lucky, it birthed a crystal dragon. If we can we're raise lucky, it. Make us lucky. <laughs> so, do you want the actual art out of the book or do you want me to use this amazing token I found in Roll 20? Oh, hmm. Both? We did summon. We did get. There's the amazing <laughs> token. <laughs> oh my god. Is it like the, the blob fuck? that we fought in the temple? That's an amazing token pack. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I, like I need I'm to have playing... an entire command, an entire campaign with those. I feel like I'm playing like Slime Rancher with those tokens. Those cute little slimes. Anyway. 
Is it similar to the creature that we fought in the temple? With like Not even close. Oh, You've never okay. seen anything like this. This is something out of a nightmare. I don't like that, but I'm the nature. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like the first token underrepresented this creature. I wow. did not... Now it's as a thought. Cool. I did not <laughs> consent to being shown that creature. <laughs> <laughs> rolled really well too i still don't sense anything she must be okay or he must be okay yep that what that's what that means i must be fine caller <laughs> in darkness i did not <laughs> oh that's bigger than large that's huge isn't it yes yes it is <sighs> fuck The collar in darkness rolls out, lusting to feast on your mind. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, well, oh, it goes wow, that's first. So rude. It's like a giant psychic critter ball. Yep. That is so rude. It rolls up on you. Mm -hmm. It sees me rolling. It's hating. And a pseudopod whips out from it. Oh. Makes you jump. Uh huh. Wow. How dead am I? Just <laughs> get it over with. Uh, also, make a wisdom saving throw because the thing is terrifying. Okay. I just want it to be known that tonight, Drick made all the correct choices. Oh, this the, is... Uh, the audience can appreciate what I just rolled because they can see my 3D dice. <laughs> What'd you get? Oh, I rolled a one, Mr. Storyteller. Oh. You are frightened for one minute. Uh, you can turn. try to save at the end Why of all of your turns. Give me your freaking bad rolls, man. So, I rolled... You can you can blame the audience because you have a dearth of elder things that haven't been used. So we're going to use some. Oh, really? Oh. We only you have got disadvantage. four summoned today. You have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while within sight of this creature and cannot willingly move near it. You can still attack it. You just can't close with it. And then pseudopods lash out. Mm, what's your armor class? 20. No. Oh. Wow, do I that means the, the 19 basis? misses. Two of the pseudopods slap your armor and leave a trail of slime across it, but the last one wraps around your face. The draining sensation stings like it's pulling something out of you. You take 13 necrotic damage. Uh-huh. I was just like, why did you just disappear? <laughs> and lose three charisma. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Charisma? You mean my dump stat? Okay. <laughs> yes, no. it drains three charisma from you. What does that put your charisma at? A hearty seven. Okay. If your charisma hits hearty. zero, you will die. Oh. No big deal. It's your turn. Well... Um, I can't get away unless I want to take attacks of opportunity, which I don't, because this thing already fucking hurt. You can take one action to disengage and one action to fly 50 feet, or whatever your fly speed is. <laughs> yeah. I think it's 50 yep. feet. Disengage and fly. Run screaming for help. Yes, seems like a good idea. Yeah, but do I? am I made of good ideas? That's that <laughs> the question. Um... My flight speed. Okay, so yes, I will take the one action to uh, disengage. And then I'm going to fly 50 feet. Bang. 
Mm. I am sensing something. <laughs> lots of pain. Lots of pain yes. coming this way. I am now within a, a 105 feet. Good. Mine goes up to 120. Woohoo! Even at the furthest point of the cart, I'm 110 feet away. You can hear me now. <laughs> Are Take you screaming? <laughs> In terror. Both vocally and mentally. Yes. So, stay in initiative's sake, but you can fly yourself back to the party and you can roleplay reporting what happened before it catches up. Oh, goodness. Anyway. <laughs> what the hell's going on? There is a salmon ball of terror. You mean fish? It's salmon-y color. <laughs> and it's full of terror, and it tried to eat my brain. And it's that way. Alright, ah. at this point, I will turn on Comforting Aura. It will last for a minute. It will apply to Kern, Sake, and Brick Chicket. Uh, uh, every time you roll a saving throw, roll a d4 and add that number to the total. Yes. Uh, I will let you all take one action before it catches up. So that was Janan's. Also, you can make your saving throw against the fear sake. That was a wisdom? With an additional d4, yeah. Okay. Am I still at disadvantage for everything? Why were you at disadvantage for everything? Well, you that's what you said. Oh, because of the. No, that's not saving throws. So you're good. Okay. Ability checks and attacks. Uh, then that was a... Okay. That was a 19. Do I need to roll that d4? No. Okay. You successfully throw off the fear. Okay. I'm going to roll something just to see if it works. Okay. What are you going to do with your action, Kern? Get out in front of everybody with my shield okay. and the Warhammer. Trick. Uh... Seeing that uh, Drake is mentally distressed, uh, Drick will activate his intellect fortress on himself. You gonna stay where you're at, or you gonna move up? I moved everyone else up. Uh, oh yeah, I will move up as well. I will move up my full 40. Oh, right next to Kern. Okay, where do you want your sloth? And Janana, you good with your positioning and your pet? Let me check. Uh, yeah, ooh, I'm gonna be in front of the pet and right okay. behind Kern, so there. Okay, there. All right, I can help it. Actually, no, he's cart. attached to the cart. Yeah. No, he doesn't have to be. You can unhook him for the fight. It's up to you. And what Over were you there, gonna say, Janan? Oh no, just commenting, I'm standing there, so in case something bad happens to Kern, I could maybe undo it. Okay. Do you have your sloth stats, Drick? I do. Oh, you have Inix stats, Janan. I do not. Get those for you. I need... And what about you, uh, Oh, wait, I do. I've got the wiki open. Uh, okay. I need to. It's in one of our many chats. I know it says huge in the book, Janan, but I'm leaving yours as large for now. It's but all the stats baby. Are, but it is, but you get to keep the stats the way they are. Okay. Okay, I found it. Okay. Well, I'll have your pets. You're good to go. Roll your initiatives. Pets act on your turns. After the player. Well, you can coordinate it however you want. I don't care. Uh, for those of you that aren't rangers, your pet gets uh, one move action and one regular action. No bonus or reactions. No multi-attack unless the creature has it. In, in, innately, like the Enix does. For for sake, it works like a ranger's animal companion. Okay. Okay. It means the pet gets all the same actions you would. Hey, I rolled a seven. Excellent. That's fine. It gives me time to go through my new powers and figure out uh, what to do. 
everyone was True. saying, everyone in chat was like, oh, you can make Unix now. And I'm like, I can, but this is all one ball. What do I do? <laughs> also, it's a psych psionic monster, so, you know. Yeah, get ready for that. Okay. The creature moves rapidly. And it gets right to there before anyone has time to react. Perfect. I need everything on the field to make a saving throw. Pretty sure it's wisdom I'm checking now. Oh, goody. As it casts Psionic Blast. But not, not the version Janan has. It was a what save? I'm sorry. Wisdom? Fuck. I'm looking it up, I'm pretty sure. You can roll your d20 and then I'll give you the modifier in a second. Uh... Forget to roll your d4s. Yep. Um, may I use a boost to get advantage on it? Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, that's not the psionic blast I thought it was. Hold on one second. Oh. It means instead it's going to use something that has an even funner name. It's going to use Absolute Terror. Oh, that's much better, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the mines, everybody. Fuck, let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> Turn around and go. <laughs> also, I was distracted looking at books. I forgot a kind of important detail. This did not happen the second you rolled up into the mines. This is a day in. You oh, had an uneventful gosh. first day. Traveling through the mine shafts deeper and deeper. That makes some more sense, yeah. Yes, I apologize. Absolute terror is wisdom saving throws all around. Uh, should Damn, I roll my? Damn! Should I should I roll my d4? <laughs> I don't know. What'd you get? <laughs> Net twenty. <laughs> twenty four total. No, you're fine. Seventeen. Uh. You can roll uh, yours. It... Say yeah, yeah. That uh, is what's rolling mine. Oh. Um, I rolled a one on my d4. Oh, no. Um, what is the modifier oh. we should add? Wisdom. 16. You're gonna want to roll that d4. <laughs> I can only, um, it only oh, yeah. two people, so. What about Kern? 18 total. Kern, you save. Should and, I use a hero point? Uh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ben, ben, ben rolled an eight. <laughs> oh, no. Even worse. Do our pets need to roll? No. Okay. Only oh. if their intelligence is higher than five. Six or higher. Oh. Well, oh, oh, yeah. My guy's dumb. Actually, yours might, sake. I don't know. What's the intelligence? It has to be six or higher. It is six. Yep, it needs to make a wisdom save. That'd be real bad. Mm. So, wisdom saving throw? Yep. Okay. You got off lucky, Ben. You got off lucky. That's a, that's a nine for my display <laughs> service. <laughs> so actually, you're immune, sake, because you saved against its fear effect. However, the Displacer Beast and Janan suffer absolute terror. Taking... Ah, there goes that die. It's gone forever. Also, my Displacer's Beast name is Archie. Archie and Janan take... Wow. Are you going to... I rolled too well. Hold on. Lupine Fuck. gave me. Hold on. Lupine gave me a boost for Archie. John, 18 mm. psychic damage. And. God damn. Every creature in the area you consider to be life threatening and hostile. Ow. Oh dear. Fight or flight goes haywire. Everyone is out to get you. Uh, do I need to make a concentrate? You know what? I will just drop the power that I'm using. Sorry, guys. Okay. 
Why would you help the people trying to kill you? Right. Um, 17 for Archie, but I don't think that's enough. Give him the D4. It was the same turn before it was dropped. True. An but audience it wasn't boost. for Archie. It was for Sage. Uh, that's true. Poor Archie. Oh, uh, fuck. Archie considers everyone but you because it can't override ranger powers to be an enemy, and it also takes the same... What did I, What did you take, Janon? Psychic damage? Uh, 18. That much psychic damage. Okay. It's good. I've got 11 points hit left, guys. Everything is oh, fine. Drick, check it. Oh, I'm first. Yeah, on, a, on a success, this is all or nothing. Nothing happens. Also, Janon, for every creature within five feet of you when your turn ends, you take D6 psychic damage per creature. Fuck. Damn. Oh. <laughs> Except your pet. I will never separate players from their pets. That's me. Uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, how far away is that thing? Pretty far. Uh, from you or from your pet? From me. 35. Don't think that has that range. Ah, it's only 15 feet. Uh. <laughs> so, we're going to contemplate your action. I'm going to tell the audience because they asked earlier and I was waiting till we got this far. Someone said they really, really want to know what I do with those summon the Elder Gods. What I do is whatever the next challenge is, until it's overcome, every summon the Elder Gods raises the average uh, CR of every creature by one. So the average CR of mobs in this thing went from four to nine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it is fine. That's why you're fighting this. Carry on, the Drick Chicken. Uh, <laughs> as I, I don't know what the weaknesses, my hunter instincts uh, kick in. I don't know the weaknesses of this, so I will test uh, my little antennae jitter back and forth, and I will fire an energy beam. What energy? Uh, this is thunder. Na, 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 and I, mm. I rolled a one. Chosen wisely, though. You can tell it flinches at the noise. It's apparently not resistant or immune to thunder. Oh, hey. So at least you learned something. Anything <laughs> else on your turn? Uh oh, I do get I do gain my temp HP. Also, there's a cap of five. If the CR goes up by five, then any other uh oh. Summon Elder Gods carry over to the next scenario. No, I don't have nothing for me. I'm going to stand my ground as of right now. My pet. Yo, Ben. Hurt. And, uh... Oh, yeah, he can move, yeah. Go, foolish animal. Uh, ben does have multi-attack. Get a bite attack plus six, and a claw attack plus six. So, let's go... Uh, 25? 25 for... hits. <laughs> Uh, and we're just taking average damage? No, you can roll. Creatures do average. Okay, so... 1d8 plus 4. I'll just roll the other one first. Oh, you mean because it's an animal. You can do the average if you want. If you're not... If you don't trust your dice. Uh, just for for easy sake, we'll, we'll okay. do it. Uh, so that's 8 piercing from the bite. And then... Would you say his bite is magical? Uh, is this bite magic? Does he have silver teeth? He does not have <laughs> okay. silver teeth. Okay. I ask for no reason whatsoever. Carry on. 
Yes. <laughs> I'm sure that was for no reason. Uh, and then a claw attack. 15. That's a hit. Oh. Uh, I do believe that is 11 slashing. Yes. Oops. Okay. Your sloth rushes up and slashes it in closet. And it just kind of wobbles like jelly and like a tooth falls out of the maw. One of the many, many maws. Fantastic. Keep that for later. <laughs> Kern. Fuck. Uh, I'll activate a base of uh, footwork. So okay. I'll roll D8, and that'll get added to my AC. So four, so I'm at a uh, 26 AC. And then he'll use his... Okay. Uh, his movement to get in between it and everybody else and engage. Smack it with the Warhammer and tell these guys, like, fall back! Fall back! Bam! Hit it as hard as it can. Okay. Warhammer. Uh... Fuck! Where did you move to? <laughs> Uh, Are you able to go up one? To there. Uh, well. With your movement. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Flanking the okay. 28 hits. Flank. Okay. <laughs> Makes a difference. All right. I did uh, eight damage on that one. Weapon and I magical. Got an extra I don't remember. Uh, I think I only the think spear I... was, not the Warhammer. Yeah. The Warhammer. If I have the oh, wait, spear. Where did the Warhammer come the from? Okay, hit it with the, the metal spear. warhammer we took out of the armory. Calix armory before he collapsed. Uh, everything in Calix armory was treated as plus one, so yes, that does count as magical. Nice. All right, I can hit him with that, and I'll hit him again. Okay. But me with the extra attack. Eighteen for another nine. Okay. Uh, you give it to uh, large wax that make two sections of it burst and splatter everywhere in your face and on the sloth. Does uh. anything terrible happen when you smash it? No. Okay. <laughs> Take. You're no longer afraid of it. Yeah. Well, you might still be, but... <laughs> <laughs> Kern looks up to Sig's like, help her! And points to uh, Junon. I don't think I'm supposed to get near her. Anyway. Junon looks at you and screams. I don't <laughs> think that's going to help. Um, I think, um, I'm assuming Archie, like, takes off down this way. If that's what you want him to do. He's scared. He failed. Like Janan. Oh, he doesn't have to run away, but he can. You want me to take control of him? Because I know what will happen if I do. <laughs> he will not run away. <laughs> hey, control. No. No, because you're going to attack my friend. <laughs> it is a displacer beast. <laughs> no. I have control of my friend, and my friend okay. is running away. Bang, bang, bang. He goes. He's down there. Anyway. <laughs> um. <clears throat> He, uh... It makes a screaming cat noise as it flees. Anyways. Yep. Uh, Sake goes up into the air. That's the symbol I'm using for in the air. Um, <laughs> uh, just to get, like, a little bit of distance, and I'm gonna be using my, um... Longbow to shoot at the thing. Okay. Janan, roll a d6 for me. Okay, what'd you get with the longbow? Yes. And that was a 19 on the die, so I'm assuming... That's a hit. Is your longbow magical? No. Is anything yes. Okay. Is anything magical in this damn place? Yeah, yeah we took, took a bunch of weapons from Kalai, yeah. remember? I don't know. I, I think you just took your, uh, your metal melee weapon. Yeah, I took a metal kopesh. That was it. Yes. And, no, and I took the 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 stormwood armor. 
Yes. That's why I have a 20. Um, anyway, uh, 8 piercing. Okay. Darrow hits it and sinks in like jello. Wait. Anything else? That was a, actually it was a, a 30. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Holy shit. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that was a 19 on the die. Damn, that was, why is it adding a plus three? That's your proficiency bonus. Um, okay. Um. So yeah, eight piercing. Dinan, what'd you roll? I rolled a one. Sake, did you have reactions or bonus actions? Maybe. I don't think so. Uh, I don't have a ton of stuff because I am a, a beast uh, ranger, so most of my stuff is tied up in the creature that's running away right now. Okay. Um, oh, but oh, I do have extra attack. I can attack twice. Can I do that there with you go. range, though? Yes, as long as it's not a crossbow. Okay. Okay. Hold on, let me find my character sheet. Okay. I will use it. That is a... Mm. Solid. 21 to hit. Okay. 12 piercing. Another arrow sinks into the jello. 12 piercing. Janan, I'm gonna I'm need you to attack Kern. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I just wanted to run away. That was my plan, was to run away. That would have been a six. It was one for each of you. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Five would have been runaway. Six would have been uh, your choice. Okay. Which also would have been runaway. All right. <laughs> well, I, okay, I'm going to use... Uh, what I have done before. Uh, I'm so sorry, Kern. Uh, no worries. Make an intelligent saving throw. Oh, I'm really good at those. Hold on. <laughs> I got 19. Yay! So you only take half damage. <laughs> you roll it real quick. <laughs> Uh, 19, oh, so that's fuck. 10? No, you save, so you take half damage. Yeah, it's 10. Wow. Yeah. 10 psychic. Uh, now you can run because you still have a move action. Uh, yeah. Up to your speed. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, my speed is 35, so I'm just gonna. I'm gonna jump on my lizard and run. <laughs> we'll move you to here. Yep. And then at the end of your turn, you can go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw to try to break absolute terror. Yay. Where are you going? <laughs> you want her to stay. Alright. I'm gonna use another one of my boosts. Okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> wow. The dice are against you. Even the, the color in darkness. Kill me. The color in darkness. Who has the lowest intelligence in the group? People, not animals. I have an intelligence of 18. Turn, what's your intelligence? 12. Mine is also 12. What's Kern's, uh... Do either of you have resistance to psychic? I don't think uh, so. What's Kern's wisdom? 11. What's Sake's wisdom? 16. Kern! It manifests crisis of life on you. Oh boy. It reaches oh. into your mind, attempting to convince you that you're suffering from an immediate deadly malady, such as a catastrophic heart attack. Intelligence saving throw. <laughs> wow. Like 21, nat 20. 
No, oh. I am not gonna go out and buy a Mazda convertible. <laughs> Fuck that thing. This heart, this, <laughs> this heart does not stop on its own. <laughs> His heart stops when I fucking tell it to. <laughs> <laughs> on a failed save, bad things happen. What happens on a successful save? Is less bad? I hope. All or nothing. Mm. Oh, wow. Would you like to know why, Kern? On a failed save, you utter belie utterly believe the condition is real. Go unconscious and get enter the death saving throw game, even though you have full hit points. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> life alert, life alert, oh shit. <laughs> Dang. Whew. For the duration, magical or mundane healing and assistance cannot allow you to return to consciousness or stabilize you. Wow, that is fucked up. <laughs> no, if you fail the death Damn. game, you die. Okay. What happens when you play the death game? Direct check it. Uh, seeing that mind games have been going on. And now that he kind of knows what this enemy is dealing with, he will activate his psychic redoubt. Hmm. And everyone in the blue, or not the blue, uh, make it purple, because everybody loves purple. Is it 30 feet? 30 feet. So everyone in here will have resistance to psychic damage and advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Wait, are, are you the in here dot? gets only one player? I haven't moved yet. True. Oh. Okay. But I'm activating it now. Last for 10 minutes unless I lose concentration. Advantage on saving throws? Yep. Intelligence, wisdom, and charisma only. Uh, that cost me five psychic points. Lifesavers, those things. Uh, in essence, Kern seems to be doing okay right now, and I know that Brady, which is the new name of the sloth, is, uh, just dumb anyways. <laughs> I will back up to cover pets, Janan, and Sake. Okay. Does that take us out of the equation? Oh, don't worry. We're still in the radius, right? You and Brady are not. Oh. Sorry, Kern's just like, it's all right. I'm just having a heart attack. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, and that is all I can do. Uh, Brady will attack just continuously because that's what he does. Uh... Bite 16? Yes. That's six piercing, I think. Is it? Uh, I'm sorry, eight piercing. And then Claw Guy only rolled a seven. Okay. Turn. All right, let's fucking hurt this thing. Uh, it's stupid, right? what it appears as uh it's at the same intelligence you do that's stupid okay <laughs> i'm gonna try i'm gonna try for a, a menacing attack uh for my second uh arena trick uh it says when you hit a creature with a weapon attack you can expend one trick to attempt to frighten it you add the trick die to the attack's damage roll and the target must make a wisdom saving throw if it's failed it is frightened until the end of your of its next turn so here we go. Both hands on the Warhammer. Wham! Uh, does a 23 hit? It does, but it seems to be immune. Seven damage. Fuck. Well, it takes, at least it takes, uh, it takes 10 the damage. damage. <laughs> I hit it again. Uh, let's see. 24 to hit. Uh, 27, actually. Uh, nine bludgeoning damage. Uh, Axe and Surge. Hit it again. Okay. Popping all the eyeballs this time. It's whack-a-mole time. <laughs> Hammer time! I fucked that up. 
15 hits. Oh shit! Eight damage, eight more damage. We just pretty Whoa. heavily splattered everywhere now, but it's not stopped moving yet. Jesus. Sake. You get you get two attacks? I get two attacks regularly and I have action surge because I'm a fighter. Actually. Which gives you another action and you took the attack action, you get another attack. Oh, thank you. I did not know that. I thought it was just like an action, not like a, the whole thing. Hit it again! 27 for 10 more damage. Still moving. Ham on this fucker. <laughs> Go for it, Sick. You, you need to not be so aggressive with your mute button, sir. It's more jelly than ball, but it's not dead. I will mentally tell you that you are in the circle of protection. <laughs> Exit at your own risk. <laughs> I'm not moving. <laughs> um, what is it like? So it's 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 gooey. What is it made out of? Mouths. When dozens of people all have their lives end in terror in the same instant, it forms a color and darkness out of the terrified psyches of the deceased, which separate from their bodies and souls and gain a shared gestalt animus as they congeal together into an incorporeal mass of psychically charged spiritual energy. Never it appears as a malevolent sickly cloud of mist comprised of numerous ghastly screaming faces roiling within it. Ooh. Uh, fuck. Okay. Um, I, I probably didn't want to defend <laughs> that. Um, but I am going to as a bonus action hunter's market so I'm dealing an extra D Six worth of damage. Um, and I'm going to hit it again with my longbow, because fuck if I'm going to get close to that shit. <laughs> you don't have to get close to it. I don't have to get close Where's to it, so you why up? would I? <laughs> okay. Uh, 26 to hit. Uh, 17 piercing. Okay. And then I'm going again. 25 to hit. Yep. 14 piercing. Okay. Oof. Okay. At that, uh, do, does my, uh, does Archie get to try to save against whatever the fuck is going on in his noggin? At the end of every one of your turns, yes. Okay, well, he, I didn't save for him last time, but that's okay. So, a uh, d20? Yeah, yep. he has advantage. It doesn't matter. I rolled a 19. <laughs> uh, that's a success. Awesome! Woohoo! Archie. Non. Is... Because it was the end of his turn, he can't do anything. Janon, D6. Oh, no. Oh, six. You decide what you want to do. Uh, oh. I'm just going to keep running away. Okay, you don't have to move off the map, but you're, like, outside of the combat zone now. The creature looks at Drick, understanding what Drick is doing. Is Drick, I'm going to need you to... Oh, yeah, do I get a save? Oh, yes, you do. Oh, God, fingers crossed. We'll pretend you're inside the radius. Fucking finally, 21! You hey. succeed! And now, hey. now you don't. Right. <laughs> Try to save game. you, and now you don't need it. So, Charisma yeah. Charisma saving she... throw, Drick, check it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, Janon will leave the uh, sphere of influence, and either it wears off or she finally overcomes the power, and then she's like, wait, what the fuck was I doing? And like wheels her lizard around, be like, we have to go back. Lizard is very confused. Charisma Chris save, Drick. Charisma save. Oh, it would be nice if I got this advantage, but I don't. It's okay. I rolled Ooh. a nat twenty. Fuck yeah! Excellent. <laughs> hmm. 
Excellent. Is that it? Yep. Your oh. turn. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what no would have happened. It's not nearly as exciting <laughs> as the other one. Uh, seeing that everyone has gathered their wits uh, that is in the sphere right now. He will 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Oh, there we go. We're all in. Uh, and utilizing that knowledge of thunder power. He will again thunder power. Thunder. Crackles of light come off the antenna. Wow. 20 to hit. To hit. For 11 thunder. It had 8 yes. hit points left. It dissipates into fog. Oh! Success! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> and as Sake's torch fades for drama. And you let your eyes adjust to this deeper level of the caves, you realize that coming from every direction, from every path, are those coral colored glows. Mm. They're everywhere. What? There's more of these things? I know we're like probably doing the session, but Sake is gonna like try to take apart this thing try to figure out how to kill it better. You know, you got 15 minutes left. However, it dissipates into nothingness, but you could still make a religion check for this creature. Religion? Yep, Sake? it's an undead. <laughs> religion Sake or arcana? Religion. Sake doesn't have fucking religion. What are you talking about? Yeah, who has religion on, on uh, Athos? Yeah. I have proficiency in religion. <laughs> Janan has it, and so did... But like, I rolled in a letter. Uh, 16, Ancient history. but I am not trained. History? You have history, Kern? No, I was just saying, like, oh. having, a, you know, skill in religion on Athos is like having ancient history proficiency or something. It is, yes. I have a one. Right? Okay. Do you I'll also roll. have history, Janan? I'll roll for Yux. Uh, no, not yeah. proficient in it. Uh, I have our, uh, uh, Psychic Arcana. Sure, roll that. Okay. Eleven is not enough. You might still get oh, something whoa. from Marcus Psionics. Sixteen is not enough if you're not trained, because this thing is bizarre. Okay. Uh, twenty-two untrained. And did Kern or Drick roll? I heard someone say something besides Sake and Janon. Uh, I have both uh, Psychic and Arcana. I'll give it a shot. Another net fucking what 20. Jesus, bro. Fuck, Dwayne? Holy <laughs> shit. Tell Devin you took all his rolls. 27. <laughs> so between Drick, Janon, and Sake, you're able to pull together enough information to understand the color and darkness. Number one, the description I just gave you. Uh, number two, they exist only to draw other minds into them. Those who are killed are sucked inside and, be and subsumed. Uh, they're undead. They're vulnerable to direct sunlight, which does not help you at all in here. Uh, they are vulnerable to radiant and, interestingly, psychic damage. Really? Wait a minute. They're what about resistant. Janon's beacon spell? Beacon They're ability. Yeah, can That's I not... generate... So it says in the description, the light can be colored as you like. I can, can I but it's not it radiant. UV? Oh. Can I color it UV, though? <laughs> color it UV. Color it UV. UV. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's resistant to acid and cold. It's immune to necrotic poison, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magic attacks that aren't silver. That's why the arrows were going nowhere. Not resistant to that kind of physical damage. Immune. Conditioned immunities include charmed, exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poison, prone, restraint. Oh, wow. It can use our sight, ego, whip, and psionic blast, which is not psychic blast. It's a minor version of that. It will. Uh, it has limited use of absolute terror, mind seize, which is what it tried to do to Drick. post about suggestion and crisis of life, although it's incorporeal and can float through things. And it drains charisma on a hit. <laughs> yeah. I got half of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, we know how to uh, kill them now. Yes. There's Wait. more. You said oh, that there were. Discord. Were there? Were there is, is the map accurate in that there are like crystals coming out of stuff? Yep, those are the glowy spots. What are those? And Karn points to the, uh, the gems. I could not hear you. He goes up to some of the gems and like he hovers his his hand over. It. Like does it respond as he gets closer to them? Uh. There it goes. It's where they came out of. So if we smash them, we get rid of them. I mean, we could look at the one that's down down that way. Points like. Oh! <laughs> he just brings the hey, hammer Kern, down hey, Kern, on hey, the. Hey, Kern. Hey, Kern. Yeah. You can try. <laughs> Smash, smash the, the uh, crystals if I can. Roll the hit. Oh, okay. An inanimate object, all right. Shablisa. <laughs> Do I get advantage because it's an inanimate object? Because I fucking rolled a one otherwise. <laughs> sure. Thank you. <laughs> 15 damage. Uh, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, my specialty, yes. And you uh, nat it, 20, what the fuck? As you explode a psi crystal. Oh. <laughs> nat 20, that's good. You only take uh, 8 psychic damage. You're in uh, the backlash. You have, you have resistance. <laughs> so, 8, 4? Take 4? And a burst of energy comes out from the crystal. Drick has a splitting headache. Spelling all psionic effects running on all players. I was going to say, if you didn't, Fuck. it would have happened. Uh, do I lose it's that great. discipline? Lose it? No, but it becomes un... Your, your stance goes away. Got it. Just and you have to refocus. It. Yeah, it's a dispel. It's dispel psionics. So if nothing else, yeah. However, it disrupts them too. The uh, ominous evil energy pouring out of that area, the vibe fades. So it did work. It's just dangerous to break them. So we can is do there this. still wind coming from that section? Yes, because now there's actually just a hole there. The crystal. They had been mining through here, and when they reached the crystal, the energy that was released caused a collapse here and broke open a really deep passage that was underneath the crystal. And when you look inside, that whole area has just got veins of iron, just vein upon vein upon vein running down into the darkness. If we could strike them from like, a distance. And it looks like silver and a more crystal, but not that weird coral colored crystal. Kern will look to Sake when he says, so uh, if we strike them from a distance, we may be able to destroy them without harming ourselves. I'll have to make my arrows a lot more potent. Quicker the better, he says, looking around, hearing the sounds. Could you... Ooh, let's get creative. Uh, Jinan shows off some of her new powers by, uh, is showing off how she can make objects levitate and teleport. Oh, that's useful, actually. Could we load up the all the gems onto the cart and like throw it down a chute or something? <laughs> or crash the, and break? They're not individual gems; they're giant balls of crystal. Oh fuck! Fuck! I figured okay. Fragile. They're fragile, but they're still heavy, like glass. Mm. Are there are there like little tiny bits that broke off from this explosion? Yes. It's also little tiny bits scattered down the various pathways if you follow them. If you follow the map, you'll see the areas where the crystals are large and where they're not. Um, are them. there stashes like in the mine that the miners would have of like supplies? There are dead bodies of miners with supplies on them. Oh. Can I loot them? Sure. What are you looking for? Dynamite. <laughs> no. Nope. Something that Sake. would make. I have a better idea. Okay. Allow me to assist you in the hunt. Okay. I will scoop up some of these small 
psychic geode shards mm -hmm. and try to tie them to some of your arrows. Okay. Oh, to like create like a cluster bomb effect kind of kind of deal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like a good idea. Dang it. Um, what could go wrong? <laughs> Chain yeah, reaction. You, you hit it. I mean, you 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 shoot a psychic tipped arrow yeah. that explodes on impact. I don't know. <laughs> Might. Um. I'll tell you this much: something's gonna happen. Yep. <laughs> uh, what? Am, anyway, could I try to see if they have anything interesting on them? Look, anyway. Try to see if you can do what? Sorry. Sake still wants to loot the miners. Uh, they have basic mining equipment. Okay. They probably still have some rations and maybe water. Okay. The picks. There's a lot of picks. Okay. <laughs> uh, light sources. There's lamps, but nothing explosive-wise. That is fine. I can still utilize it. If we rush, we might be able to get these crystals out of there, out of here. Accumulate them all, destroy them in one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. If they don't destroy us first. I have to move fast. What's your plan? Besides move fast on the map. Uh, uh what? Northeast? Up here? This way? Move the cart close uh, to where one of, the, one of the mining carts that can house them uh, into like a centralized area like maybe here and then start like grabbing as much of them as we can and like piling them into them. Okay. Um, just as a test, this might go very, very badly. Uh, I'm gonna try and cast Ego Whip on one of the crystals. Ah. Uh. Power sinks into the crystal and the crystal glows brighter. Feeds up right. like the energy. Right. So we're not gonna do that again. <laughs> Tells you something. Tells you these operate as psionic capacitors. It's like a ring of spell storing. Here's a weird idea. We have uh, scions uh, on in this group. Yes. Could you leech the psychic power out of the crystals? Like you did with the the uh, the pillars back in the ziggurat. Hmm. Uh, could we storyteller GM DM? Um, uh, you don't know. Um. Okay, so... I got nothing to lose. I'll touch one. Yeah. My hand. Okay. <laughs> this is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> What's your armor class? Uh, 19, 18. Wait, what? Yeah, it's only 18. Okay. Uh, Ganon is also trying this. What's your armor class? 20. Okay. The opposite happens. There's a stinging sensation as you both lose two power points. Mm -hmm. You realize if you weren't psionic and had touched it like Kerner's sake, you'd have lost intelligence. Oh. Or if you ran out of power points and were touching it. Hmm. Worth a shot. <laughs> like thought eaters, but not sentient. Yeah, it mm. was. We, we learned something, but how? <laughs> yes, we learned not to touch. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're maybe... not yeah, we might just have to do it the old-fashioned way and 
picks and axes. At this we get too close and head strike them. Sake, like, waddles up. Has, like, three pickaxes that he's taken off of miners' bodies. I mean, is I'll that gonna work? It. Are you sure you want to do that up close? When you can potentially shoot it from a distance? Well, I want to try it from up close. Didn't we try it? Well, wasn't adding I... the crystal, at, didn't it, like, add power to it? Yeah, so what Jinon would like to do is um, take one of the pickaxes that Sake has collected and then just wham on a crystal. You want to heal before you do that. <laughs> uh, oh, that to is answer Sake's question, you don't know. Suggestion. You haven't tried yet. I'm going oh, to hand... We did. I'm going to hand the pick to Drick Chicket. Say, like, perhaps a scion will have more luck. And then yes. back away ten feet. <laughs> Perhaps the other scion <laughs> should do this. Yes, sick. Uh, like badly. Uh, Junan. Okay. Uh, uh, I can heal myself. Don't worry about it. Okay. I I get very. I mean, save it for whatever <laughs> drip chicken is about to do. Yes. Uh, unclear on the directions. And uh, what exactly is going to be the outcome? Are, are you are you gonna chuck the pickaxe at it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what this thing is. Not not the crystal, the the pickaxe. I don't, <laughs> I don't pickaxe. Uh, but it is some type of melee weapon. Thus, needs to well, be why, hit right next to it. Why stop at one pickaxe? You got multiple <laughs> arms here. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I'll just grab one with all four hands and go in. It's like a work, a Yams. I'm gonna go hide over here. Behind yeah, the like a like a wheeling whirl of pickaxe <laughs> death. With the massive release of energy, the crystal explodes. That's where we pause until next week. But Drick oh. enveloped in a psychic explosion. <laughs> At one time he had four arms, and now he has none. <laughs> I mean. That'd be cool if we could absorb the psychic energy. That'd be pretty awesome. Then he had eight. As, as the sun reaches its zenith and we search for shelter from its burning rage, we hope you return next week to continue this tale with us. But until then, there are many other fine adventures the cast and crew of Orville Tales can provide you with. On Mondays, Curse of Strahd Reimagined at 7 p.m., followed by Delta Green Watcher at 11. Tuesday, of course, today, Dark Sun at 8 p.m. Wednesday... <clears throat> We have G.I. Joe pork chop sandwiches at 8 p.m. On Thursday, we have uh, the rise of Pyre Scythe, I remembered, at 9 p.m. A 5e two shot, three shot, we're run by Dave's. On Thursday, that was Thursday. On Friday, we have Masks of Gnarly Thotep at 7 as they enter the Egypt chapter, followed by they came from Camp Murder Lake. Summer's been axed at 11 on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Reign of Winter and Pathfinder 2E and Cult Divinity Lost, The Nephilim Prophecies at 11, and finally on Sunday, Mage the Ascension, Vast Station Regenerated at 9 p.m. You can find me next, uh, where you'll actually see me running Reign of Winter on Saturday at 7. Come check it out. Mm. Hardened Warriors, tell the audience who you are and where you can be found on our show as well as what you do outside of it. Hey there, everyone. Um, I'm Eric. I don't know plus online. You can find me here next week on Monday for Delta Green. As always, I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi on the internet. Uh, you guys can watch me tomorrow as I play as Wetwire, G.I. Joe Extraordinaire. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, you can find me back here on Friday, running Masks of Nyarlathotep. They are reaching Cairo, and there will be lots of very fun secrets for them to unlock. Uh, for our Treyon patrons, who are also Call of Cthulhu fans, uh, for our subscribers, $20 or higher, uh, I am also running Call of Cthulhu Horror on the Orient Express. It's a lot of fun. I've got a great cast. Uh, we've already got two episodes in the hopper, so look for that coming out soon. Uh, and then I'm also here on Sundays for Vast Station Regenerated and on Mondays for Delta Green. You can find me, Stolen Fires, on my Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. 
Uh, especially Twitch, where I've been streaming a whole lot of Dragon Age, because I may or may not be running a Dragon Age Chronicle at some point on this channel. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. You can um, harass me in the chat on Thursday. I will be producing our de dear twin dad for his two shot in the shadows. Uh, and you can then find me on Saturday for Reign of Winter and Cult Divinity Lost. And, on that note, we leave you to your burning thirst. Until next week, good night.